we use many different types of buzzbar protection on the transmission system. The one we'll focus on in this course is high impedance buzzbar protection. Here we have a typical single buzzbar substation with a 1600 amp incomer feeding a buzzbar with four 400 amp feeders. As usual, to protect the buzzbar, we need to position a current transformer on each current infeed. This forms the buzzbar protection zone. As usual, the P1 terminal of the current transformer faces the circuit breaker. One of the key elements of a high impedance scheme is that all of the current transformers must have the same ratio. This is normally chosen with the primary ratio of the current transformers matching the highest current rating of the circuits being monitored. In this case, that's the 1600 amp incomer. So let's make all the current transformer ratios 1600 to 5. Why 5? Well, you could make it any value, but the most common protection relays that you will see are rated at 1 amp or 5 amp. The next thing we do is to connect all of the current transformers in parallel and feed them into the high impedance buzzbar protection relay. We ground one side of the ring to provide a reference point and prevent harmful voltages appearing on the circuit. Let's now close the circuit breakers. Current now flows through the incomer, through the buzzbar and onto the feeders. These primary currents are replicated on the CT secondaries. As the name suggests, the buzzbar relay has a high impedance and therefore no current wants to flow through the relay and it all circulates around the current transformer secondaries. Let's now calculate the currents flowing through each of the current transformer secondaries. On incumbent A, we can see that the primary current is 800 amps. The CT ratio is 1600 to 5. Therefore, the secondary current is the inverse of the CT ratio, which is 5 divided by 1600, multiplied by the primary current of 800 amps, equals 2.5 amps on the secondary. Let's now look at feeder B. On this circuit, we can see that the primary current is 100 amps. Therefore, using the same equation, the secondary current is 0 0.31 amps. We can then use the same equation and calculate that the secondary current on feeder C is 0.63 amps, feeder D is 0.94 amps, and feeder E is 0.63 amps. Let's see how these currents compare on a CT equivalent circuit. The current flowing through the relay, sometimes called the spill current, is the summation of all these currents, which equals zero. Therefore, in this balanced condition, no current flows through the relay and it doesn't operate. Let's now see what happens if we have an out of zone fault with a value of 20,000 amps. The currents now increase substantially on incumbent A and the faulted feeder B. Let's look first at incumbent A. The primary current is the fault current which is 20,000 amps plus the original load current of 800 amps equals 20,800 amps. Putting that into our equation, the secondary current now equals 65 amps. Next, let's look at feeder B. On this feeder, the primary current is the fault current of 20,000 amps plus the original load current of 100 amps equals 20,100 amps. Using our equation, the secondary current is now 62.8 amps. The other feeder currents remain unchanged. Looking at our equivalent circuit again, the currents are still balanced because the increased current on the faulted feeder B has been offset by the current flowing through incumbent A. Therefore, the spill current is still zero and the relay does not operate. This is obviously an ideal case, but in practice, small differences between the current transformers may create a small amount of spill current. When we're deciding, on the high impedance buzzbar protection pickup value, we take this possible spill current into account. Although the buzzbar protection will not operate, the feeder protection on feeder B will, <laughs> clearing the fault from the system. The incomer current now carries on feeding the loads. Let's reset the system again, and this time have a fault on the buzzbar, with a rating of 30,000 amps.
looking at our CT secondary current again, for incumbent A, the primary current equals the fault current, which is 30,000 amps, plus the original load current of 700 amps equals 30,700 amps. This gives a secondary current of 95.9 amps. The other feeder currents remain unchanged. Looking at our equivalent circuit again, this time all of the feeders are still simply carrying their load currents, but the incomer is carrying 95.9 amps. Therefore, the currents no longer balance. The spill current is 93.7 amps. This is more than enough current to operate the bus bar differential relay, and it operates <laughs> tripping all of the circuit breakers connected to the bus bar. The fault has now been cleared from the system. The high impedance of the bus bar relay forces all of the currents created by the current transformers to circulate between them. When the currents balance, the net output of this arrangement is virtually zero, even under through fault conditions. During a fault condition, the currents cannot balance, and the net current difference flows into the relay, which then operates. As we've seen from the calculations, there is normally no middle ground here. During no fault and through fault conditions, the currents that enter the relay are virtually zero. Whilst during an internal fault, it will be tens or hundreds of amps. The certainty of a fault occurring is why this type of system is so reliable and secure.